Hey y'all, welcome to In The Wild. And for those that are listening, I hope we have some new and soon to be new Jags out there because mm -hmm. this is the official start of a brand new summer series that we have with the new student and family transitions team. And I am excited because Leah will be our co-host this summer. Uh, she has been an orientation leader and she's now a student coordinator. Yeah. Uh, do you wanna share what a student coordinator is for those who are unfamiliar? Yeah, so I was, like Rayshawn said, I was in orientation last summer. So this summer I'm coming back to the office, but I kinda got a little step higher, a little promotion there. Um, so I will be leading our orientation leaders, um, kinda teaching them what it's like to be an orientation leader, kinda these leadership skills and kinda getting them prepped for um, the summer and and for teaching and kind of guiding new students. So that's what I kind of do. I do a lot of other kind of behind the scenes stuff when it comes to uh, swag packaging and things like that. Um, so I'm kind of there as a guide for new students as well as the existing orientation team. Um, but we are so excited to have all these new Jags um, coming here at Augusta University. We're ready to have you and have some fun. Yeah, uh, but you also do a lot of other stuff on campus. Do you want to share with the good people of some of the other involvements you have? Yeah, so outside of the New Student and Family Transitions Office, I am doing the summer series with Rayshawn, but I'm also an 1820 ambassador. So any um, students, prospective students who are maybe just looking at AU and not fully sure they want to commit yet, they do their come they come visit and do their campus tour. You can meet me as well because I will be I'm an ambassador, so I can give some tours as well and some insights of what it's like to be a Jaguar on campus. Um, I do I'm involved in some other clubs and organizations, uh, kinesiology club, physical therapy club. I'm also an exec board for the honors program. So any students oh, cool. who are interested in being a part of the honors program or are just not sure what it's like to be an honor student, um, reach out. Like I'm here to help any student. Um, whether you're honors or not, um, but yeah, I just want to be a helpful source for really any student on campus. So as you can see, Leah is an Augusta University expert, <laughs> uh, super involved on campus, and some of you have probably already met her uh, from one of her tours on campus. I saw you the other day giving a tour. Yes. Um, but today we're going to talk all about orientation and what you can expect, because orientation is such a special time mm -hmm. of you getting to uh, become familiar with campus for the first time if you haven't been able to tour our beautiful Somerville campus yet. Uh, a lot of you will have the opportunity to meet some of your lifelong friends. Leah mentioned that she has For met sure. one yes. of her lifelong friends at orientation, um, getting you involved with mm -hmm. all of the things just to become a Jaguar. And so for this summer series, we got you some of the best people on campus that you'll not necessarily meet, but help plan your first uh, couple of years on campus and making sure your experience is like no other. Like no other. So first up, we have Mark Myers, who is the director of New Student and Family Transitions. He's actually Leo's boss. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> she'll get to, you know, ask some fun questions to him. Yeah. And then we have some other orientation leaders or folks that are part of the orientation team to talk to you. So here we go. We're excited. Welcome, Mark, back to the show. Uh, I think it was a year ago since we've had you on. Yeah. A lot okay. has happened since then. <laughs> Always happening, yeah. Yep, busy, busy time of year. Um, Leah, how do you feel to be able to interview your boss? I think it's kind of cool. I mean, we get to talk, but I don't think I get to do it like this in interview style. So we'll see how it goes. Well, if you have any gotcha questions, I, I support <laughs> for him. Uh, but to get started, Mark, what inspired you to go into this field of work, of working with new students and supporting them through that college transition? Yeah, so I was really fortunate to go to um, from Pennsylvania originally. I went to a small liberal arts school in the top corner of the state and I had a mentor I uh, met pretty early on in college. I was a first gen student and so navigating um, higher ed was really foreign, especially a private liberal arts school. I was from the middle of nowhere and went to a school with people from all over and our dean of students there really took me under her wing and in my first um, summer on campus, she offered me an internship uh, rebuilding their orientation. The, we didn't oh, actually cool. have one. Yeah, so I worked with her for quite a while. And then um, when I uh, got into the field, uh, I just really um, liked kind of helping people navigate higher ed. There's a lot of like different components to it that um, can feel overwhelming to people. And I like to try to make things as um, easy to navigate or give them someone to help them navigate um, to the best of my ability. What would you say are some of the most 
rewarding parts of your job? Because there's so many pieces to your office that, you know, make your uh, role fulfilling. But I'm curious, what, what do you enjoy the most? Yeah. Um, so as a director, I'm very fortunate that outside my door every day is a group of Gosh, see, sounds like a hundred of them when I'm in like a meeting and I'm like teams them. Can y'all quiet down? Um, but it's really cool to be able to kind of banter uh, with uh, students that are like, you know, when I was coming in, this really didn't work. Um, and I think at AU, um, I'm really fortunate to be around colleagues and within um, an environment that we're kind of able to try new things. Um, you know, I remember last spring we were planning an event and I could not find a space to do it. It was, a, it was raining um, and it was in January and someone's like, what if we do in the library? Um, I think it was one of our GAs and I'm like, you're crazy. And then I like pull up the floor plan and I'm like, no. And it was a super cool event. Um, and I think that um, as I've moved through higher ed, um, you know, some, I've always tried to be very um, aware. Um, of just the input of students and how things change. After COVID, a lot changed for our students. Um, and so I get to kind of know um, their experience and also what is working and what isn't. Um, and they're very open with that. So I really enjoy watching uh, and growing with our students um, and viewing it kind of as a, a two-way type of street. What would you say makes our orientation program like no other? Like no other. Um, so when I came to Augusta University, I, um, the reputation's great. Um, you've got this research institution um, that isn't super huge. We're mid-sized. Um, and a challenge I face in orientation on AU's campus is our classrooms are smaller, mm -hmm. which logistically for orientation, and Leah knows I'm like, I don't have room reservations because mm -hmm. like they're small. <clears throat> but we're able to have like a nine to about 12 uh, a uh, student to orientation leader ratio through our programs. Okay. Um, and so it, it aligns with best practice, but at some schools, I remember my first year, I kind of came in and the teams were a bit bigger. Um, they were, it was a newer office and we had an orientation leader leading a group of like 40 people and that was crazy. And now, um, I don't think last summer we had any orientation with more than 12 students. And so there was a lot of like connection building. Um, something we got to offer last year that was cool. Um, was we offered campus partners an opportunity to also participate in tours. And Leah um, was someone uh, with the orientation as they made group me's. And she would do little like uh, funny pics and things to keep her students engaged throughout the summer, all mm -hmm. 14 of her groups. And one of our partners um, was in one of her groups and would send me like Teams messages like, look what <laughs> Leah just shared today. Not sharing it out. <laughs> Picture of cats and stuff. Yeah. And so I think the connection first approach, we do a lot to uh, make sure students feel like they have someone. Um, and I think we do a really good job with that. So for all of our new students and new families to, you know, get to experience orientation this summer, what would that experience look like for them? Yeah, so every year we kind of go through, um, I spend the entire fall going, um, meeting with all of our campus partners, reviewing orientation feedback. We have a student coordinator that um, is dedicated to reviewing all of the assessment data that we collected from last year. Um, and so we look at what went really well, and last year we did a pretty large overhaul. It was my first summer um, in my role, and so we were able to introduce some new things. We had our largest team. Um, this year we um, exceeded that team and we now have oh, wow. our new largest team. Um, and so this summer, I think that uh, last year we rolled out a program called Jives for Jives, a peer mentorship program. Um, this summer we're continuing with that. Um, and so a lot of connection building, um, facilitating uh, mentorship relationships. Um, we're also rolling out a platform called Nearpeer this summer, um, which will also be part of the orientation experience to help students um, find friends and connections before um, they even get here. Oh, nice. So, yeah, we're really excited about that. And then our family track, uh, last year was our first year ever doing that. Um, and as we welcome parents to campus, we want to provide them with a very uh, curated experience um, to help them also understand you're part of um, our community here at Augusta University. And so they'll have engagement sessions, um, sessions focused on like what do all these terms mean that your student might be calling home about and at what point uh, and in what ways can you support your student? So if I was a new student 
um, not from Augusta, going to college for the first time, going to be a new freshman, and I'm nervous. Like, what is what would I expect for an orientation day um, to kind of run? Like, am I just there to be there? Am I going to be listening to other campus partners? Like, how? What am I expecting? Yeah. So, um, and our morning welcome is always first part of orientation. We be greeted by this like really cool dance that our orientation leaders do. Um, we had one of our presenters last year, something that really stuck with me. It's awkward. Like <laughs> you're sitting there in a theater with about 300 other people you don't know. And they don't know what they're doing or anything either. So. Nope, you're just kind of sitting there like, oh, they're dancing. Um, and then though you get to see the faces of the people that are leading you. Um, you're not alone. There is no part of your orientation day where you were like, all right, good luck, kid. Um, <laughs> Throw you off into classes. Yeah, so you're with your orientation leader all day. Um, and our orientation leaders spend, um, Leah is very well aware of this, um, a semester um, beforehand getting to know each other and getting to know how do we make people just feel like this is where you belong? Mm -hmm. um, and so we're not going to tell you, yeah, financial aid is up there. We're going to walk you up and show you um, we're going to take you into the Academic Success Center and introduce you to the staff to make sure that you really feel um, like you know what's going on. And you may not remember all of it, and that's okay mm -hmm. because we are going to remind you. Because um, orientation is not a one-day experience. It's the, the transition experience. So you've got your online welcome beforehand. It's kind of prepping you for it. Make sure you do that, please. Um, and then you've got your one-day experience. Then you'll have some other modules to do. And then our lead week extended orientation. And so through all of that you're really guided so before they even step foot on campus besides listen to this amazing summer series we got going on uh, what are some other things that they could do like at home to prepare for just the best orientation day yeah. experience um yeah so if you're registered for orientation you know how to uh, a student would know how to use their enrollment checklist uh, and through that enrollment checklist they're going to see that they need to complete their online welcome um, which is going to really give you, uh, it's going to prime a student for their orientation day. Um, they're going to complete their new JAG survey. And so um, something very cool that we're also trying this year is a pre-advising approach as well. And so as long as you complete your new JAG survey, your advisor is going to try to get that scheduled to you as soon as possible. And then if you want to make changes to it, you're going to be able to schedule an appointment with them, talk through it. Um, and so we really encourage you to take a look at that. Make sure you do that well in advance. If you do it the morning of orientation, they're going to be building it that afternoon most likely. And you can still chat with them. Um, but giving you and your family and your supporters an opportunity to talk through it is important. So do all students have to go to an orientation or what are there rules when it comes to that? Yeah, all new um, undergraduate students do have to go through a new student orientation experience. Um, Almost all students, with a few exceptions, are attending our in-person one-day orientation. Those exceptions are people that are more than three hours away, typically, um, or maybe uh, international or active duty and just cannot be on campus for that. We've noticed an 11% increase in retention among students that uh, uh, attend our in-person session versus the virtual um, mm. because they are literally spending a day learning where is everything, how do I use all these different things. Yeah, they get to actually connect with people there, see what it's like, you know, not just through a screen. So. Yeah. Right. yeah, and another question that I had was a lot of times students, uh, as well as like their parents or supporters, may need to go through their own personal checklist, like, oh, I need to talk to financial aid, or, oh, I need to go run by the Jackhart office, or I want to go by the Roar store to get all this stuff done. Is orientation built to have them have that time to do those sort of things, or would you recommend them trying to take care of some of that stuff before orientation? Yeah, so some of it, um, it really depends. Uh, this year, financial aid is a little bit different than it's ever been. Um, we have not, the federal government uh, is redoing the financial aid process to, um, really help students' um, aid packages be more reflective of their situation, which is great. Um, so this summer we are anticipating a need for students potentially to have to go talk to financial aid or do some of those uh, what we call taking care of business kind of actions. And so the orientation day uh, after I, time is still up in the air a little bit, but normally after 2.30 um, there is time for students to kind of go and uh, they're led, their orientation leaders are kind of then turned into wayfinders to help them get to their different um, areas. Another question, because I'm trying to think of uh, my orientation experience, and my story was very interesting. Uh, 
But like a lot of students also kind of have like a good mix of emotions, like anxiety just to be on campus. And this is for some of them the first time, you know, stepping foot or spending this much time on campus. So how do you, do you train your orientation leaders and your team to kind of support those students who are feeling super nervous about being with us for the day? Um, yeah, so our orientation leaders go through, I'm, I can't even tell you how many hours, at least, gosh, at least 300 hours of training oh, wow. um, to get them to that orientation day. Uh, and we're also very selective in our process. It's a very thorough. Some people do not love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, several stage interview process. We had last fall about 250 applicants, and we hired about uh, 22 new orientation leaders with some returners. And so... Our orientation team is, are going through uh, different forms of uh, role playing. Um, they have two intensive training weekends. Our next one is next weekend. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. um, throughout the spring, they take a three credit uh, leadership 2000 course as well. Uh, that meets every Tuesday and Thursday from uh, 530 to 645. Uh, and they go through two weeks of intensive training uh, in May, right before the orientation season as well. And through that process, they're, um, A, we want our students to feel confident. Um, so when a student is nervous, uh, they can look to someone that knows what's going on. Um, because you want to make sure you're surrounded by people that um, like and love where they are and also know how to navigate it um, and kind of uh, can push people to lean into that awkwardness I mentioned earlier. Because um, it can be kind of fun. That's why we do yeah. the like <laughs> cringy icebreakers at first and... Um, some of them are pretty fun, like, um, there's this one, like, um, I love it. And, I like train wreck. Train wreck, that was the one, yeah. Mm, I haven't so, heard of that one before. Yeah, we've all fun yeah. with it. And a lot of it's just kind of being able to resonate with new students, because orientation leaders are students, um, whether they be, like, a freshman or older. Um, so they have experience, you know, coming in as a nervous new student or excited new student, and they're there to help guide those new students and kind of share their own experiences. Um, and so when building that connection, I think that really helps um, new students kind of relax a little bit, know that they're not alone and that um, they're ready for AU. So, how was, for sure. How was your orientation, Leah? Do you remember? I do remember. I did the honors orientation. Um, I, that was when I first met my, my roommate. Um, first time I met with her because we've been talking online. And so that was kind of fun knowing I wasn't really alone. Um, I was there to kind of just go with the flow. I wasn't sure what to expect, um, but I, I did enjoy it. I liked getting to eat um, lunch with new students and kind of just figure out what's, what I'm doing and that realizing that like it's actually happening, you know, I'm actually going to college, I'm going to be a new college student. Um, but I thought it was pretty smooth. Um, I think I had a good experience because one of my really close friends I met during orientation as well. And so that's just a great point to meet new students because I don't know anyone there. I don't know what it's like. And I don't think other students really do either. Um, so taking the opportunity to kind of put yourself out there was good. So, yeah. yeah for Your experience? Me, <laughs> I'll never forget because for my orientation, the actual day got cut short because I had a, there was a terrible thunderstorm. Oh. So we were, or me and my friend that went with me, we got trapped in the JSAC because we were supposed to go, I think, back to the PAT. And I remember some of the orientation leaders on the radio was like, now, what are we going to do with our group? Because that's, you know, a good bit of a walk and we literally can't even take an umbrella outside. And so the supervisor at the time was just like, just let them go. Like, just, just, just let them go home. So the orientation t-shirt and stuff, like, I never got oh, no. to go back and get. So mine was a little bit of a disappointing experience due to the weather. Mm -hmm. But um, it was fun because I still am connected with my orientation leaders. Like, met them. They were so great. Mine was the literal last uh, available orientation because I wasn't super prepared uh, that summer. Uh, but it was great. The orientation leaders were great. I still keep in touch with mine and to be coming OL and to still keep in touch with some of my students is also a pretty like full circle experience. Yeah, I see a, a good amount of my OLs um, walking around either in the JSAC. Some of them I've had in my classes because um, they're maybe the same major as me. Um, I'll still message them once in a while, just kind of checking in, seeing how they are. I'll probably do that soon, you know. Um, but knowing that I'm a student and they're students and it's not like you'll, they'll never see me again. Um, and I'm someone they could reach out to or any of the orientation leaders. So. Is there anything, Mark, that's very exciting that you have planned that you'd like to share for the students? 
Um, I have a lot of exciting things prepared, Rayshawn. Um, I think this summer, uh, the team that we have is super creative. Okay. Um, I'm very excited for what our welcome is shaping up to look like. Um, and I think that something I've had to let go a little bit is I've let our um, student leaders, so we have a pretty robust um, kind of student development program within the office. So got an orientation leader, they report to a student coordinator or an intern um, who were OLs previously, um, and they work with a GA. And this year they've really been hands-on with uh, creating like new ways to lead our small groups and um, to kind of move through the day. Um, something we rolled out last year that I really loved was our lunch and learn series because mm. lunch can also be a very awkward time in an orientation. Yeah, uh, you don't know who to sit with. You know, it, it's kind of it's weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so we uh, did these kind of like conference style uh, lunch and learns is what we called them, uh, and students could go and learn about virtual reality in the Academic Success Center, or um, they're military affiliated, connecting with other folks in that program. Uh, last year we had about six student sessions and a four parent. Uh, this year, uh, I checked this morning, we have um, I think 12 student uh, lunch and learn proposals from partners and clubs and organizations um, and about 10 parent ones. Um, that I think it's going to be really cool. I've been reading through them and I'm like, oh, these are so great. Um, so excited to see what that all looks like. And then we have a lot of webinars coming up too. Uh, 26 webinars planned for students as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, our campus partners, uh, the calendar invites are coming, so if they're watching, <laughs> just so they know. Um, but a lot of them are like financial aid drop-ins, uh, mentorship Mondays. Uh, so again, with that transition component to how we do our work, um, it's not a one and done because you do have people that are like, I don't even know what to expect. Yeah. They have studied abroad at AU. Um, that's so cool. Um, we have a lot of people that are from the area that really have never been to campus. Yeah. Um, and so kind of bringing them in and saying, look how cool this place is. I, that's the part of my job I love and also what I'm excited about to continue this summer. Yeah, I always love hearing like local students who are like, oh yeah, I've always, you know, gone to campus a couple of times, but then having them attend orientation or some other event on campus and they're like, oh, I had no idea this existed or I had no idea this was, uh, this school had so much going on. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. When, you give us, when you give us a chance, you can see that there's a lot more than you can think of. Yeah. There's so much opportunity and so many like things that students can like, take advantage of and kind of be a part of. And I feel like um, lots of students who are from Augusta aren't aware of that. Um, but like once they do take that kind of push or that step to learn more, um, they really get more involved, which is really great to see. I do know another thing that we're wanting to kind of add to get more kind of student engagement, at least for me with the marketing, is I am going to be doing a mini mic series. So if students really like to interact and kind of answer questions, trivia questions, just kind of like show me your outfit of the day, just kind of get involved um, in ways to kind of break out and meet, meet new friends, we'll be going around doing some of that as well, because uh, that's not something we've done in the past either. Um, so we're kind of making steps to be a little more interactive, a little more relaxed, and let students know that they have a voice if they want to use it in some of these mini mic series, and they can do that. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let, before we let you go, Mark, a uh, quick question for just, I guess, final message for those watching to prepare for orientation. You can look into the camera to tell them. Yeah, welcome to Augusta University. Um, we have a tagline that I'm hoping you've heard by now that when you're here, you're gonna have an experience like no other. Mm -hmm. um, and we are so excited to welcome you to campus. Um, our orientation leaders, our student coordinators have been working. Uh, orientation is for about four months now. Our student coordinators for over a year um, to prepare for our summer uh, transition experience. Uh, we cannot wait to have you here. Uh, and for our parents and guests that may be watching too, um, your students in really great hands here. Um, and also don't forget, you're a part of this experience too. And when you come for your one-day orientation, when you begin getting those emails from me, um, they're coming. <laughs> uh, please take a look at them and like find the different ways that you can also be part of your student's experience. Um, in our unit, um, and a reason I think that we are super su successful in a lot of what we do is that uh, we're looking at things that you may have questions about or feedback you have and making sure um, that we can kind of help navigate that with you. Um, so yeah, welcome. Uh, and we cannot wait to, to see you in just a few short weeks. Well, thanks, Mark. And for those watching, stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with some orientation leaders and some more stuff that their office provides. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Hi, my name is Angel Lovett and I'm the Director of Parent and Family Philanthropy here at Augusta University. If you and your family would like to know how to do more with our students here at Augusta University and become more engaged, please find our website at Philanthropy. We appreciate everything that you do and go Jags! Welcome back y'all and we are continuing our new student orientation episode. Joining us are some other folks from the new student and family transitions team and take it away Leah. So you're going right. to start this round for us. All right. So we have Niasia here and Cam here. Can you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves and your role when it comes to the new student and family transitions office? Sure. I can go first. So I'm Cam. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of new to the office. So I'm a graduate assistant and I started in January. Um, my role is more of like a management mentorship type of role. And um, yeah, I just kind of help oversee a lot of things and guide students in the right direction. Cool. So for me, I've been with this office for a couple of years. For um, I started off as an orientation leader, and then I became a student coordinator, and now I'm an intern for the parent and family orientation track. How has it been so far preparing for orientation this summer? It's been actually pretty fun. Um, since the parent and family orientation started last year, it's been really nice to build off of that and to develop the foundations and to build off and make it grow into something more than what it was last year. So how is that different than um, the interns or student coordinators who look over the student side? So for as an intern it's different from a student coordinator or orientation leader because you're one step above them and so you help guide them throughout the orientation day. So you're training them to make sure they can work with parents and families or students depending on where they work with and you're helping them grow into leaders themselves. So, Naisha, since you've been a part of the orientation team for so long, what have been some of your favorite moments so far? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, my favorite moments have been Leaf Week. It's where we allow the students to come out and before school starts and connect with one another. It's really fun to see them excited to come here. Of course, Parent and Family Weekend, seeing students engage with their parents and families, and then just the overall orientation experience and growing with other people who also are really passionate about the job. Yeah, because one thing that I have noticed that I think a lot of people may not realize at first is that with this office, it's not just orientation. Like you mm -hmm. have programming that goes throughout the whole entire year, which a big one is Jags for Jags, where you get to work with Cam. So do you want to talk a little bit about Jags for Jags? Sure. So <clears throat> with Jags for Jags, it is a mentorship program that connects new incoming students to upperclassmen to kind of smooth that trans transition for them. So how has it, how has the program been like so far with you coming in as a grad student, or graduate assistant? Sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> uh, well, I I am both, but <laughs> um, I think that we have been really working on making sure that mentors and mentees have more time to connect, and trying to get them to be um, have just more interaction, so that whenever they do talk, it's not like awkward or. Um, so that there's more uh, natural a flow of conversation. Yeah, because I think last, when we first did it, it was mainly virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so we were getting to meet with our mentees and mentors kind of online through maybe text or however else they planned it. But I think now with it growing, um, we're trying to see how we can improve and kind of implement maybe face-to-face -face options where they can come together, have opportunities to hang out. Um, those are still in the works, of course, but I think being able to have a mentee and mentor relationship that you can meet face to face um, is a little bit better than solely online. So, are there other like improvements or things that um, the Jags for Jags mentorship is trying to grow into or kind of expand on? Mm, I think just growing in general, getting the word out, getting more mentees and mentors so that we can provide services. But um, apart from, I think our biggest thing right now is getting more face to face like contact and getting um, more connection with mentors and mentees. And what, I guess, for y'all's perspectives of this program starting last year, what has the response been like for the mentorship experience? Because I've heard positive things, but I mm -hmm. guess for you guys to kind of see it a little bit closer, what has that been like for y'all to see? I think it was really fun. I was given, I think, six mentees, and so it was really fun to interact with all of them because they're all different. So you get to uh, work with all walks of life. And even when we came to campus, I got to meet with all of them in person. So it was a really nice experience to see the people I was talking to for the whole summer. 
and to help them grow and get used to the college experience. Yeah, and it's really flexible in the way that when you're a mentor, you get to choose the amount of students you want to kind of lead. Um, so depending, because everyone's a little different, you might be more busy, um, you can choose anything from one plus students, and then you guys come together, kind of decide how you want to work together. Um, I know some groups have smaller groups so that are a little bit more personable, and some have a little bit larger groups. Um, it just all depends on how you can manage it, and it is a really flexible program, right? Like, who who can be a mentor? Is it kind of open to anyone? Is it, like, are there uh, requirements? Can you kind of talk on that? Yeah. So, um, it's upperclassmen. Uh, obviously, if you're a freshman, you're just coming in, you can't really <laughs> mentor somebody on the experience. But really, it's if, if you're an upperclassman and you had a good experience and you kind of want to help somebody else with their transition, then you can be a mentor. Does this count towards graduate students and uh, those kind of further in like grad school or like dental school, medical school, kind of? Yes, absolutely. And actually what we try to do is match people up based on like interests. And that includes like if you were like, oh, I think I'm wanting to go into this graduate program. We might try and match you up with somebody who's in that program or it is open to graduate students too as mentees. So if you all are in the same program, you might be matched up with somebody who's a year ahead of you. So it really works out in that way. That's awesome to have that, I guess, well-roundedness of it all and being inclusive to all students from different uh, mm -hmm. starting points. Yeah, like stages in life, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I asked Mark this earlier, but I'm curious to hear from y'all as well. What advice would you give to the new student who's feeling a little overwhelmed or anxious about coming here and spending the day with us for orientation? Like what? some are your best tips to help them settle their nerves? Um, of course, there's no need to be nervous. All the resources that we have here on campus, we show them to you on your first day, so you know that you have all these people who are here to support you. So there's no reason for you to feel nervous or scared, because we all just want to help you and see you grow. Yeah, and I would say that, you know, you're not alone in how you feel. You can look around you when you want to get here. The people around you feel the same way. Y'all are all in the same boat, and you have great things to look forward to because of the great network of support that we provide here. So mm -hmm. you can be nervous, but it'll go away. And now I'm curious because we shared our orientation experiences earlier, but I wanted to hear about y'all from when you were new students here. What was your orientation experience like? If you okay. can think back that far in Asia. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I came in in 2020, actually. So I came in that with was the COVID year. Start. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So we didn't have like the orientation experience and all the, everything of that nature. But what they did do is they still connected us to an orientation leader and they had them call us throughout the orientation or that summer before our school semester started. And they had like one or two big days where we went online and we just learned about all different resources. We still did the JAG survey and everything of that nature, but it was just a bit different. It was more like a virtual orientation, if you will. Mm. Um, well, this is a really funny answer because grad students don't do orientation. <laughs> um, I think, honestly, I learned a lot more about um, the school by working in the office. Before I, I started here, I only went to one building for class. And oh, wow. I really didn't know anything about the mm -hmm. school. And <laughs> now that I'm Now that I'm in the office, I'm learning a lot and uh, becoming a lot more informed. <laughs> With the office, because um, Nigel, you've been here for a couple of years, and mm -hmm. Cam, you are not new, but kind of new. What are the things in the office that we're trying to improve on, or what are things that new students or parents and guests are should look forward to or expect at their orientation? Um, so for the parents and families, we want them to expect more sessions or other things for them like personally for them catered to them i know a lot of our orientations before were catered to students but we want to make parents feel comfortable about their student coming to our college so we have more sessions for them to learn about the resources for their student or even resources for them as well i would say for students to really be prepared for a fun environment i have really enjoyed working with the OLs and working with the student coordinators. It really is a great group of people and I think the new students are going to be welcomed with open arms and a lot of excitement so they can look forward to that.
They'll be welcomed by a nice dance. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to perform. I'm excited, I'm excited to see this dance. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful dance. It is. It's a great. It is a great <laughs> dance. It is. I'm gonna see if I can find the years that I uh, was Noel when we performed because we actually performed at uh, Shrove, which for wow. those who are uh, unfamiliar is like a regional orientation conference. So with all mm -hmm. the different universities, they get to come together to share best practices, meet and interact and fun. Have some fun and yeah, we performed. But the first year that I was Noel, I wasn't a part. But then our second year, all of us had to participate in the dance, and so that was that was interesting. What song did y'all do? It was a super cut of different songs, wow. um, oh, like a cheerleading squad, <laughs> yeah, like a remix. Basically, <laughs> if I can find it, I'll definitely share it with y'all. Uh, About two years ago, we also participated in Trove. We did an Encanto skit. It's okay. on YouTube if you want to see oh, it. Encanto oh, skit. Yes. Do not look it up. It's on YouTube. Look it up. Look it up. It's on you YouTube. should see how we've improved yes. from that. Well, I mean, it, center, wasn't, it, it was me. good, but I think, you know. <laughs> we've grown. We have we've grown, grown so we've much. Grown. We've grown. I can't wait to see it. So, oh. yeah, there's all the fun stuff from welcome dances. Oh, icebreakers. Yeah. All the fun uh, chants and stuff that y'all get to do. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of y'all's go-to icebreakers? Train wreck. Train wreck. Killer wink for me. Killer wink. Yes. What's that one? So um, there's one facilitator, usually the orientation leader, and everyone else is just walk, walking randomly in like just a blob. And you have two people in that blob that are like the killers. And so they will wink at the person they're trying to kill and the person oh, just drops wow. dead. And so everyone else has to figure out who the killers are. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I think it's Leah. And she's like, no, it's not me. And then they're dead if they accuse the wrong person. Interesting. So, yeah. I'm a slick winker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess go. I would also say train wreck is the one to look forward to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love doing train wreck. Yeah, there are a lot of icebreakers that get students moving. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we have alternatives, um, more kind of chill sit down ones as well. Um, but I think Killer Wink is pretty fun. Um, you get to learn, definitely learn more about students. And it gets fun because <laughs> laugh at each other, learn right. more, and kind of get to move around. Because um, it is a long day, and sometimes you need that chill, you know, mm -hmm. during an orientation. So, What are some of the, I guess, more challenging parts behind the scenes of being part of the orientation leader team? Because I know long days, especially during the summer, it's hot. But what are some other things that you're like, we power through this, we power through this, and we overcome it every time for orientation? I would say we always have like the mid-summer slump to where we've been going for so long, oh, all yeah. semester, we're doing training, and then we start orientations, we start off strong, but or, like when we hit July, we get it like, oh wow, we've been that doing this for a while, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and so and it gets hotter, so it's more of like keeping up your energy, and it can be challenging sometimes, but that's why we're all here to support each other. And it's probably different with parents and guests, because you could act right. one way with students, um, but you have, there's a different level of uh, professionalism when mm -hmm. you're with guests or uh, parents and families. Right. Um, but I do agree, sometimes you get in a routine, but then that routine can get kind of boring here and there. But of course, there's always energizers and things that we do with each other to kind of keep the morale up while mm -hmm. we, we're going. But I personally don't think I ran into many problems that are like, oh my gosh, this day needs to end. Right. <laughs> uh, it's mainly just kind of like, oh, okay, oh, okay. But like we kind of grow to be resilient in that way, so. Well, my final question is also similar for what I asked Mark. What would be that one message to have to all of our new students and their families watching this that are registered for orientation and they're ready to come or become a part of Jag Nation? What would we you tell are them? ready for you. We are so excited to have you on our campus and we are so excited to show you our welcome dance. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day together. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I thought of was, Go Jags, roar! Go Jags! <laughs> <laughs> Jags um, for Jags, you gotta push that. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, then I will. This is my moment, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, take advantage of every opportunity. I think mm, college, yeah. it, as somebody mm -hmm. who's in grad school now, college, those four years, you're never going to experience anything like that again. And take advantage of every opportunity, opportunity to connect with people around you, to try things you've never tried before, to go places you've never been before, 
and just take that time to really explore who you are. And Jags for Jags is a way that you can do that. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> you know, uh, plugging Jags for Jags because there's someone who's been through it before. And like you said earlier, it can be nerve wracking when you, I mean, it's like an adjustment, right? You're going yeah. from living at home or whatever to mm -hmm. somewhere you've never been before. You have no family around. So it, it's really nerve wracking, but having someone there to help you and tell you how, like what to expect or it can be something as small as like how do I register for classes or it's like where what are some clubs like how do I figure out what clubs there are around campus those are some really good there were the having someone tell you like all these things is really can be really helpful to somebody who is like I have no idea the first thing to do here so yeah yeah and for Naija um because you overlook the parent and family track. Mm -hmm. So do you have advice or words of wisdom for mm. parents and families when Ooh. they're sending their children or child off to college, specifically here at AU? Um, I would say the AU does a really good job at making parents comfortable with sending their students here. We have a lot to offer for parents as well, like our parent board or things that they can get involved with to make sure they're still connected with the AU campus and their student as well while they're here. Well, thanks, y'all, for coming to chat with us a little bit. I'm super excited to see all the things, including this welcome mm -hmm. dance that y'all have yes. coming up uh, this summer for orientation. And, yeah, for those watching, you're going to have a good time here. We can't wait to see you. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. That was fun. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Go Jazz. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, Leah, but I really enjoyed being able to talk to Mark, Naija, and Cam. Mm -hmm. I think y'all have like a, such a great vibe going yes. on. Uh, so I can only imagine what it's like going to be for the actual uh, orientation to see y'all get to work. So I'll hopefully be able to s be at some of the stuff for mm -hmm. orientation this summer so I can see a couple of you guys. So don't be afraid to say hey and that you watch this episode. Uh, feel free to speak. Feel free to follow uh, New Jags yeah. on Instagram. Follow In The Wild on Instagram as well because we will be coming to you all summer long with cool new stuff. Um, any other thoughts, Leah? So New Jags, please register for your orientation if you've not already. We're so excited to have you. We're so ready to see you. Um, all the campus partners are going to be there for you. Really helpful uh, people, professors, staff who are going to be there to guide you at your journey. Orientation is going to be probably one of your first big steps when coming to college. Um, meet some new people, aka us, um, and other students, and just have some fun. We're ready to have you, and we are going to welcome you with open arms. Go Jags!